Hi there, so in this section we're going to be looking at ratios, rates, and proportions, and then um, end, end with a discussion on percentages. So we'll first start here with ratios. Ratios are the quotient of two quantities that have the same units. And then with that said, there are three ways to write a ratio. You can write it using a colon, so this would be 5 to 2. Get my pen going here. You can actually use the word 2, 5 to 2, or you can also write it as a reduced fraction, 5 over 2. Okay. Um, I recommend the fraction format because um, your ratio should always be in reduced format, and it's already second nature to reduce a fraction. But if you write it in the other two formats, I, I see students often forget to reduce, so I recommend the fraction format, but any of the three is, is acceptable. All right, so I'm going to do example one here with you, and I'm going to let you try example two on your own. It says, in a class of 20 students, there are three left-handed students and 17 right-handed students. Part A wants us to write the ratio of left-handed students to right-handed students. So it's telling me, okay, I want left-handed to come first. It's either coming first, it'll be on the left, or it'll be in the top of your fraction. So um, left-handed, there were three students that way. I've got that up top. Two, the number of right-handed students, and there were 17 right-handed students. 3 over 17, that's going to be my final answer because that cannot be reduced. Um, let's go on down here to letter B. It wants us to write the ratio of right-handed students. So we know our right-handed students, there are 17 of them. 2, that's going to divide. The total number of students in the class. So we know we've got 17 right-handed, 3 left-handed, or in this problem they went ahead and told us that there were 20 students in the class. Sometimes you have to add the two pieces together. But in our case here, we've got 17 over 20. Again, that's going to be our final answer because 17 and 20 don't have anything in common, so it can't be reduced. All right, I encourage you now, pause the video, try example two, check yourself by the posted solution key. All right, I'm going to move on down here to rates. Rates are the quotient of two quantities with, this time, different units. Um, you'll always want to be sure with a rate that you include your um, units with your answer. So I'm going to do example three with you and let you try example four on your own. It says in a six hour span, 21 people were treated in the ER. I'll tell you exactly what to find here. Find the rate of people treated per hour. So that tells me then I want my people on top, per always needs to divide, hour. So we know then that there were 21 people that were treated in a six hour span. Of course, we, then we want to reduce that so we can um, um, divide both of those what, by three. Divide by three, I get. 7 up top, 6 divided by 3, get me 2. <clears throat> and then um, you, can, you can leave it like that and say 7 people every 2 hours, or if you want to go ahead and reduce that, 7 divided by 2 would get you 3.5, so 3.5 people per hour. Or you can leave it like this, 7 people for every 2 hours. Okay, I'll take either format there, it would be fine. Okay, I'll let you try example 4. I'm going to flip it on over. Let's look at a unit rate or a unit price. Unit price is always um, calculated by taking the price of the item divided by the number of units. So I'm going to look at example 5 here with you. In example 5 it says a store has a 12 ounce soda priced at 84 cents and a 16 ounce soda priced for a dollar. And it wants to know what's the better buy and why. So we're going to find the unit price for each of these sodas. So the first soda is 84 cents. And it is a 12 ounce soda, so you've got 84 cents divided by 12 ounces. I would put that in my calculator, divide, and that should land you at 0 0.07, so 7 cents per ounce. We'll repeat the same process over here for the 16 ounce soda, so its price is a dollar for 16 ounces. So notice I'm continuing to use my units. 1 divided by 16 in my calculator lands me at. 0 0.06, so 6 cents per ounce. So then, you know, which is the better buy? Obviously then that would be the one that is the cheapest, and so obviously 6 cents is cheaper than 7 cents. So we'd say then that, that the 16 ounce is the better deal and because it's cheaper, cost less per ounce, okay? All right, I'll let you try example 6 on your own. And then we'll come on down um, and wrap up with proportions for this portion. <clears throat> proportions are where two ratios or two rates are equal. We're going to set up a proportion with like units across from one another and then cross multiply to find our, um, 
um, final solution. Um, there's lots of different ways to set up proportions. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll get you started here, and um, I'll do examples seven and eight with you, unless you try nine and ten on your own. So um, let's first read example seven. It says approximately 7,500 tweets are sent every 10 seconds. At this rate, how many tweets are sent in one minute? All right, so a proportion has two ratios or two rates that are set equal to one another. I personally like to um, kind of set up exact, you know, put one unit on top. Well, it's always going to be one unit on top, one unit on the bottom. But I like to set it up so that I have it here. I've got 7,500 tweets in 10 seconds. So I'm going to put my 7,500 tweets every 10 seconds. And now by me setting it up like this, then that means that when I come over here on the right hand side of the equals mark, I am fixing then that tweets have to be up top and seconds have to be on the bottom. Alright, so they have to be they have to be across from one another. And like that's what I was saying up here. That's what I meant by like units have to be across from one another. And then you're going to cross multiply. So it says at this rate, how many tweets are sent in one minute? So then um, we're trying to figure out how many tweets, so that's where I'm going to put my X. One minute, now notice how my time, my unit down here is seconds, so one minute is equivalent to how many seconds? Hopefully you agree, that would be 60 seconds. Now you are all set up and ready to solve. Like I said, we're going to cross multiply here. Cross multiply, I like to do my X term first, so when I do 10 times X, it gives me 10X. 60 times 7,500, that should give you... 450,000. All right. Last step is to solve for x. Um, so this is 10 times x. I want to get rid of that 10 to undo multiplication. You divide. Or another way to think about it, you always divide by the number beside your letter. So that x is beside my 10, so I got to divide by it. Cancels out. Leaves me with x. 450,000 divided by 10 should land you at 45,000. That's tweets. It is good to use your units in this um, section for sure. All right, so we'll come on down to example eight. In example eight, it says that a 16 ounce coffee at Starbucks has 220 calories. It wants to know then how many calories would there be in a 12 ounce coffee? All right, so we are, we, what they're giving us then here is that we have a 16 ounce coffee and it has 220 calories. If, if you were to write it 220 calories on top and 16 ounces on the bottom, that's A-OK. -okay just as long as when you come over here to the right hand side you keep them across from one another so because I put ounces up top I've got to keep ounces up top calories on the bottom they've got to stay on the bottom but if you had everything switched it's not going to change um, it's not going to change the outcome that we would get the exact same answer alright so it wants to know how many calories so this time I'm solving for my calories so I'm going to put X down here on the bottom and then 12 ounce coffee so I'm going to put my 12 up here at the top so like I mentioned to you in the last problem I always like to do my cross multiplication with my x term first, so 16 times x, give me 16x, 12 times 220, that'll get me 2640. Last step to get that x all by itself, always divide by the number beside your letter. Cancels out, x equals, you do that division, and you should get 165, our x for our calories, so that's my units. So 165 calories in that 12 ounce coffee. Okay, definitely pause the video, wrap up um, these, um, these, those few problems that I didn't do, and check yourself by the solution key. Remember, you've always got um, resources to, you know, seek out your instructor um, or the math lab to get your questions answered. All right, I'm going to flip it on over. And in the last couple of pages here in this set of notes, we're going to be looking at percents, decimals, and solving percent problems. Okay. So um, the per a percent always represents the number of parts per 100. So when we say 87%, we're talking about 87 of 100 equal parts. All right, so I'm going to come on down to um, example 1 and 2 here. So it says in 2009, 17 of 100 U.S. Senators were women. Part A wants to know then what percent of our U.S. Senators were women. So we know the part 17 of the 100. And because that, if because remember, a percentage always means the number of um, parts per 100, we can say then that's equivalent to 17%. If this number, um, you know, if your fraction here can never be reduced, you can certainly always do that as well. Then in, um, in Part B, it wants to know well, what percent of our U.S. Senators were men. Well, if we have 17% were women, we know that the total percentage has to add up to 100%, so I can do 100% minus my 17 
and we're looking at 83% were men. Alright, we'll come on down then and look at example two. It says the human body is 65% water. It wants us to write this percent as a fraction and simplify. So we already know then percents can always be written as a fraction by putting them over 100. So this 65% is equivalent to 65 over 100. This is a um, case in point where here this can definitely be reduced. Um, you can definitely you know, see that oh, well, they both will, 5 will go into both of these numbers, so we can divide them both by 5. 65 divided by 5, 13. 100 divided by 5, 20. Final answer, 13 and 20 don't have anything in common, so we've written that percent as a fraction and we've simplified it. All right, let's go on down here then to our first rule. It says then if we want to ever convert a percent, and this, this happens quite a bit, we'll be solving percent problems here in a moment. This one is um, quite common, and I, the example I started you with is one that happens in everyday life for you. If I want to convert a percent to a decimal, you can do one of two things. Don't do both, but do one of two things. Either take that percent and divide it by 100, that's converted it to a decimal, or you can move your decimal two places to the left, and now you have converted the, your percent to a decimal. I'm going to come down here below in um, example three and demonstrate both um, procedures. So I'm going to let you try which you know let you figure out which one you like you prefer. All right. Sales tax in North Carolina is seven percent. So think about you know you go to the store and you buy something as simple as a tube of toothpaste. You know you don't you know we all, we all know we have to walk out the door and we have to pay tax on that tube of, tube of toothpaste, but um, when you get up to the cash register, they don't multiply, let's just say, let's give them nice even round numbers. Okay, well, if it's a $3 tube of toothpaste, you don't want them to get up there and multiply it times 7, and then you end up having out the door having to pay $21, right? They're going to multiply it times. Let's figure out that. Let's figure out how, what that value is. We need to change this percentage to a decimal, so I'm going to change that 7. I'm going to do the first method, just divide it by 100. So you could pop that in your calculator, so 7 divided by 100 would get you point. 0, 07. So if we did 3 times 0, 0.07, that's a little bit more reasonable in terms of the amount of tax that we would have to pay on your toothpaste. Or another method, like I said, is to take the existing decimal in your percentage and move it two places to the left. So remember, if you do not have a decimal in your number, it's always sitting just behind that number. And I'm going to move it one, two places. So I've moved it here, and that becomes 0 0.07. Okay, so either way, either way you do it's perfectly fine. <clears throat> okay, um, so I'm going to come on down to example four here, and then I'll let you try example five on your own. In example four, it wants me to convert my, the following percents to decimals. So again, using one of these two methods. Now, in that first one, don't let the, fra the fact that you've got a fraction there trip you up. That, that one half, that's an easy fraction to, to recognize, right? That's 2.5. So then one of two things, either take this now and divide it by 100, and that'll get you 0 0.025, or move that decimal two places to the left. Either way you want to think about that, I'll, and I'll, I'll go ahead and write that one more time down here. So if I had my 2.5, and I'm going to move it one two places so you can see I land in the same spot that point zero two five. All right, I'll let you try number five on your own. And um, going down below, we're going to pick up our second rule. If we want to undo what we just did, you'll, you'll see why in a few moments um, these are things that will be needed whenever we're solving percent type problems. If we want to ever convert a decimal to a percent, one of two ways. Again, do one or the other. Either multiply it by 100 or move that decimal two places to the right. I will come down here below and do example six with you and let you try example seven on your own. I want to write this decimal as a percent, so we can just multiply it by 100. If you do that in your calculator, that would land you at 45.7%. Or, like I said, you can move it two places to the right, and that again, there would also put you at 45.7%. Either way you want to do that. All right, so now down below, you're picking up your percent application problems. So you've got your formula here, part equals percent times whole. You're going to notice as I um, solve each of these problems, I'm going to continue to write that formula over and over just so that um, we're always going to put the part in the correct spot, the percent in the correct spot, and the whole in the correct spot. Every time we do these problems, there will be an X in one of those three spots because we're, because we're going to know two of them and one of them will be an unknown that we'll be solving for. 
there are um, two notes that I've um, written down here that are in reference to this formula that we need to keep in mind. The percent, anytime we're putting the percent into this formula, it has to go in as a decimal. So that's following our rules up above. You're either going to divide by 100 or move that decimal two places to the left. Now in the end, because whenever we put our percent in as a decimal, if we were ever solving for the percent, then when you're solving for the percent, it's going to be important then to get your final answer as a percent. So that means we're going to have to multiply by 100 um, to get our final answer. Or, or like I said above, you can move your decimal two places to the right. Okay. All right, so let's come on down below and look at example eight. It wants us to find the sales tax on a purchase of $64.50 if the sales tax rate is 7%. And I've got you rounded to the nearest cent. When we say rounded to the nearest cent, we're talking about the same, that's the same as rounded to the nearest hundred or two numbers after your decimal. Okay. All right, so I'm going to write my part equals percent times whole. All right, so we know, we definitely know our percentage, right? 7%, so you can do, um, I'm going to do 7 divided by 100, so that's going to put me at 0 0.07. Um, you want to find the sales tax. Your sales tax, would that be part of your bill or the whole bill? Hopefully you agree that'd be your part, so I'm going to put an X there. The whole bill was $64.50. So X equals 0 0.07 times 64.50. You could put that in your calculator. You should get 4.515, just taking out a couple of decimal places there. Like I said, I'm going to reiterate here, I'm rounding to the nearest cent. So I want two numbers after my decimal. That five behind that one there tells me that I'm going to round this up. You'll be paying um, a tax of $4.52 there. Final answer. Okay. I'm going to um, flip it on over then and look at number nine. <clears throat> So I'm actually going to do 9 and 10 because in each of these, I'm still using the same formula, part equals percent times whole, but you're going to see that my x is going to move around in that formula. So I'm going to go ahead and write my formula. Part equals percent times whole. And it says here that a cyclist has completed 18 miles of a 30-mile race. And when, in here, we want to know what percent of the race has the cyclist completed. So hopefully you agree then, if I'm trying to figure out my percent, then that's where my x has to go, underneath the percent. That's the piece I'm trying to find. The cyclist has completed 18 miles of a 30-mile race. So that 18 miles is part of the race, and the 30 would be the whole race. Our goal is to solve for x. If you, if you need to rewrite this as 18 equals 30x so that you have the letter, you know, the letter behind the number, that's perfectly acceptable. Um, I don't I don't often do that with these problems since they're um, they're pr relatively small because either way you think about it the rule is you divide by the number beside your letter so whether the 30 is behind it or in front of it you're going to be dividing by that 30 cancels out leaves me with x when you do the 18 divided by 30 in your calculator you're going to get 0.6 and remember like I um, reminded you at the our top when we were using this formula anytime we're solving for the percent final answer we need to take that answer that we just got there, multiply it times 100, because that's our percent as a decimal, we want our percent as a, as a full percent, so I'm going to multiply it times 100, and that's going to give me then, I'll come over here, 60% is our final answer. All right, let's scoot on down then to example 15. Again, I'm going to write my formula, part equals percent times whole. Says there are 15 girls in a class. This represents 60% of the class. It wants to know then how many students are in the class. Let's plug in what we know. Um, we, we know we've got our 60%, so I can divide that by 100 or move it two places to the left. So that just should give you 0. 0.60 or 0. 0.6. Okay, depending on if you, if you use your calculator, sometimes that might they might drop that zero at the end. It's always legal to drop zeros after a number whenever you're looking at decimals. Um, let's see, the 15 girls in the class is that part of the class or the whole class? We agree that's part of the class and then we're trying to figure out how many students are in the class so that would be the whole class our um, goal now is to solve for x I'm going to divide both sides by 0. 0.60 x equals 15 divided by 0. 0.60 should put you at 25 so there would be 25 total students then in the class this time, I remember, I don't need to multiply by 100. I'm not solving for the percent. The only time I multiply by 100 is when I'm solving for the percent. 
All right, I'm going to let you try example 11 on your own. And then I'm going to come over, oops, sorry, I'm going to come down, and I'd like to do example 12 with you. Very common um, type of problem that we would do in everyday life. It says it wants us to find the amount of sales tax on a whatever we buy. Here we're looking at buying a video game. Priced at $59.99. Sales tax, of course, 7%. We're going to round to the nearest cent. So we did this um, piece earlier. So part equals percent times whole. So we know our um, rate, 0 0.07. Whole price of that video game, $59.99. Sales tax would be the part that you'd have to pay. If we were to put that in our calculator, we would get 4.1993. Right, so like I said before, we are trying to round to the nearest cent always. When we're talking about money, it's always nearest cent, so that's two numbers past your decimal. That 9 behind that 19 tells me to round that up and it becomes $4.00. And 20 cents in gas. I'm, I'm sorry, in tax. In tax. Now to find the total cost of my video game, think about that. What that would look like. Your total cost would be equal to the price of your item plus your tax. Add those two together, and you should get sixty-four dollars and nineteen cents. Okay. I'll let you try example 13 and 14 on your own. Flip it on over then. Last page, last formula. Got your relative change here. Um, relative change will um, find, and it can it can be asked in, in several different ways. It can the problem may ask you to find the percent increase or percent decrease, or it may just say ask to find the relative change. Any of those three um, tasks that are asked of you to find percent increase, percent decrease, or relative change, they're all referring to this formula here. And you'll notice how I have, um, it says a new amount minus an old amount. I put that in parentheses. It's important that you do it that way if you're going to use your calculator all at one time. I will talk about when I come down here and do a couple of these problems, though, that I, I personally kind of I burn a step before I go to my calculator. All right, so let's come on down below here in example 15. It says find the relative change. So that's my Q. I know I'm using this formula, so I'm going to go ahead and write the formula. So new minus old, I'm going to abbreviate it, though. Divided by old, it's going to be times 100. All right, so it says find the relative change in the number of news talk radio stations from 2004 to 2011 if the numbers are 1285 and 1453, respectively. It says find, um, round your answer to the nearest hundred. So respectively means that the, you know, these were our years that they were given to us. So this is the 2004 number of um, talk shows, and then this is the 2011 number of talk shows. All right, so the new or current number of talk shows would be that latter amount at 1453 minus the old number, so the earlier year, 2004's um, number of talk shows, so that would be 1285, divided by that old number, 1285, times 100. So like I said up above, if you're going to put this in your calculator all at one time, you're going to have to use those parentheses. So 1453 minus 1285 should land you at 168 over 1285 times 100. So me personally, I like to do that subtraction first, and then then you can put this in your calculator without, ever, without needing any kind of parentheses, nothing fancy. You can do 168 divided by 1285 times 100. I've got you rounded to the nearest hundred, so again, that's two numbers after your decimal. Pop that in, you should land at 13.07 percent. Final answer. All right, and then um, last one that we'll look at together, and then I'll let you try um, example 17 on your own. We'll finish up this entire set of notes by checking yourself with the solution key. In example 16 here, it says that a college student's good grades earned her a student discount on her car insurance premium. It wants us to find the relative change if her annual premium was lowered from 1050 to 924. I'm going to write my formula. New minus old divided by old times 100. So... Maybe I'll just come underneath like I did before. So let's see, our, her new premium, since she was lucky enough to have it lowered, her new premium is the smaller amount, 924, minus her old premium, 1,050, divided by that 1,050, times 100. All right, so up top we subtract. This time you're getting a negative number, so negative 126, divided by 1,050, 
times 100. Put that in your calculator and let's see here. Yeah, this one comes out perfect. You wouldn't have to do any rounding at all. You should get a negative 12%. So it just tells you, I mean, we, we should have expected it to be negative, right? That her premium, excuse me, was lowered and it was lowered by 12%. So she's um, received in a 12% um, premium discount. All right, so like I said, um, at this point, if you haven't already, go back and now fill in the ones that we, um, that I did not do and check your stuff by the solution key. Thanks a lot. Bye.